Hello. Hi. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can get it in the thing. Hello. I'm Alexis. Wait, how do I, how do I see people? There we go. All right. I'm Alexis. Nice to see you. Can you see me sideways? If so, just give me a heart or put a comment in. Let me know that you can see me sideways. Um, I'm pretty sure you can see me, but you never know. I haven't been on here in a little bit and I just updated. Um, all right. Chat, hit a no. Okay. Can you see me? If you can see me, just give me like a little comment to say you can see me. Hey, Kristen. How are you? Nice to see you. So apparently, even though I updated, I still have to read it sideways, which is why I'm awkwardly going sideways. But if you can see me, can you just leave a little note to say you can hear me and see me just fine? Or if I'm sideways? Um, hopefully, I'm not. Uh, anyway, so today I want to talk about what your business message is. So this is something that, especially if you're multi-passionate, you can get really confused on this. And I know from personal experience how challenging this can really be. So again, if you can hear me or see me, just give me like a thumbs up or something to say that you can actually see and hear me even though I'm sideways to the camera. Um, hopefully it'll work. Again, I haven't been on here in a little bit. But business message, it's really important, right? To have a clear message so that people know when to think of you. Because that's what we're really doing here. It's not like a business message because you need one or a business message to help with like anything other than we want people to be able to think of us based on what we do. And so that means we need to have like a key little area that we focus on so that people know when to refer people to us. And that can be for a specific skill or it could be for an experience that people want to have or an awakening or an understanding that people need to have as well. So hopefully you can see me. I just don't feel like I, I totally understand if people can see me, but hopefully you can. Um, Anyway, so a lot of times you might see like, oh, so-and-so is really great at digital marketing or so-and-so is really great at graphic design. Perfect. So those are skill sets that you might refer to somebody to. But there's also a time when you're saying, oh, you know, I'm just really going through this tough time with my partner or in my life, you know, and I don't know how to figure out what it is that's happening. At that point, you might want to refer to somebody who has um, a more emotional base or say, oh, these people are really great at thinking through problems. And that's still a skill set, but it's different than saying I have a specific skill. So I want to walk you through the strategic step. You're straight on the screen. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> you never know when you do an update if it totally messes everything up. So thank you. I appreciate it. Um, thanks so much. So I want to walk you through the strategic steps that I use with my clients to get clear on exactly what your business message is. And we're going to walk it down from your life purpose. So we're going to go through the whole few first steps in my system that I use with clients. And this is a system I developed um, after being in the U.S. government where I helped work on national planning and how do we come up with a planning system or way of going about our work that actually helps us achieve our vision and not just takes advantage of all of our resources and like cobbles them together to throw at a problem, but we actually have a solution that we want in mind and that we can come up with some creative ways to get there. So if you think people would benefit from this topic, please spend a minute now to share this. You just swipe up um, if you're on an iPhone and share this with anybody you know who is really searching for their business message because this stuff sucks, right? It's painful if you don't have it. You're confused. You see everybody else succeeding. You're like, why can't I tell people succinctly what it is that I do? And I get it, especially if you have lots of skills. So I teach yoga. I teach meditation. I'm a life coach. I'm a business coach. Like I do all of these things. So I get it. I get that pain of going like, well, but I'm not just one thing. So how do I figure out what my one thing is if I'm not just one thing? And that's what we're going to work on today. So one of the things I want you to think about just going into this right off the bat is that instead of being one thing, I want to think about the one thing you are trying to communicate through all of the different work that you do. So I'll give you an example. And then, like I said, we're going to go through it step by step and actually get through the whole process. And I'm just trying to level myself off here because I look like that. Look like I didn't have my V8 today. Um, so again, if you think anybody would benefit, please take a minute now to share this. It'd be awesome. And we'll get going. The more people who know this, the better we're all going to be. So the first thing to know is that you can share a message no matter what you're doing. So like I said, I teach yoga. I'm also a business and life coach. I'm also a strategist. I do strategic work for companies and nonprofits. 
But through all of that work, even though the modality is different, the type of work that I do is different, I'm getting at the same goal. And that goal for me is I'm helping people learn how to recognize and strengthen their allegiance to themselves. So in yoga, I'm teaching people how to find that inner voice, find that inner awareness of their bodies, of their um, emotions and how they feel, and then a lot, teaching them how to tune into that so they can make more strong choices based on what they want, not based on what they think they're supposed to do or maybe some habits or routines that they're in. And that can spread all the way from food to exercise to not taking, excuse me, a time off or a nap if you need to, and so on. And then in life and business coaching, hey, Jen, thanks for being here. So we're just talking about, um, yay, thanks for, thanks for inviting followers, because so, this is really key. This is really key. Hi. So many of us are stuck in this not getting clear on our business. Hey, thanks for joining. So, so many of us are stuck in what our message is, especially if we have lots of, um, lots of different passions and lots of different skill sets. So we want to make sure that we can figure out what it is that we're actually doing. And so the first piece that we were just talking about, the first piece is to understand what that message is that's going behind all of the different ways that that message shows up for you. So there's a distinction between your message and the way you share your message. And you might share that message in 10 different ways. You might share it in 100 different ways, but it, it's probably the same message. So I was giving you the example that for me, I teach people how to find that inner allegiance. Thanks for the hearts, I love them. I teach people how to find that inner allegiance. So I can teach that through yoga and helping people get in touch with their bodies. I can teach it through life purpose work and helping people really understand what it is that they're here to do so that they know how to continually direct themselves back to it. I can teach it through business. Like what is, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Pretty much what we're doing here now, right? What is your message so that you can continually go back to that and find that allegiance to what you want to create in the world? And same, so we could put it in all these different contexts. And it could be the same if you are somebody who's um, really skilled with coaching, but you're really skilled with technological things, but you're also an amazing artist. Maybe your overarching message that's going across everything is going to be something to do with self-empowerment or um, self-healing or, or maybe even a simple message like, hey, you're okay. You're just totally fine. Everything's okay. And you can share that broader message through your work. That doesn't mean you ever have to say it. It can be how you approach the work. It can be the playful attitude you bring to your work. It can be um, the, the branding that you choose, but that message is communicated through your business or through these different aspects of your business. I'm okay, you're okay, exactly, exactly. Through these different aspects of your business um, because it's all one central message. So let's look at how we figure out what that central message is. And if at any time you have questions, just feel free to pop them in the chat box. And thank you for the hearts. Uh, we're gonna now walk through this, the first few steps of my system to figure out what is your actual message. And it's gonna be a broad brush. So if this is confusing or you're like, wait, you lost me on a step, don't worry, we can always go back. And I have a couple training videos on this that are free that you can go and check out in more depth as well. So the first step is to figure out what is it that your soul on a deeper level is here to understand? What is inner allegiance? Okay, great. So that was an example of my message that goes across all of my work. So one of the things I, I've found is that people, especially people who are multi-talented or multi-passionate, they're like, I don't want to pick just one thing. I don't want to pick just one way of expressing how I'm here in the world. And what I want to say here is that we don't necessarily have to pick one way of expressing or what I would call a modality. So I don't have to be just a yoga teacher or just a coach or just a, if I was a graphic designer, you know, a graphic designer. I can be, I can have multiple ways of expressing my message in the world, but I can keep a coherent message running through all of those. So when it comes to your business, you may have lots of different things that you do, but one message. And what I want to help you get clear on is what is that message so that you don't feel like just because you have these different skills and all these cool things about you because you're a whole person, right? You're a whole person with lots of experiences and lots of things that you want to bring to the world that you don't feel like you're either shutting yourself down and not able to express all of those things or you're not doing yourself justice because you're not actually sharing something that's coherent and easy to understand for other people. So when you have a message that you under that you can realize 
sort of infiltrates everything that you do or supports everything you do, then you can share that message much more articulately, which threads together all the different components of your work. So imagine it just like a beaded necklace. You can have all these different beads, but there's a single thread running through them that holds it on the necklace. So we're gonna look today for that single thread, which allows you to just like give yourself a break that you're multi-passionate. Like, okay, you're multi-passionate, but you still have probably, I'm gonna guess from all of my work with clients, I've worked with over 100 clients, that you have that one message that's really running through everything that you do. So let's look at how to discover that message. And of course, if you have questions, please type it in. That's awesome question that Jen provided. Hi, Tammy. Um, so awesome question, Jen, thank you. All right, so inner allegiance for me is my thread that's going through everything. Love the necklace image, thank you. Yeah, so on my necklace, I've got my, I should be wearing a necklace. I've got my yoga bead, I've got my life coaching bead, I've got my business coaching bead, like this conversation. Um, got my meditation teacher beads. So and all of that, hey! So and all of those different beads are held together by that single strand of, of self um, allegiance. So no matter what the topic is, no matter what the, what I call a modality, so how I'm choosing to show up or in what specific theme area or, <laughs> theme area is probably not the right word, like industry, industry is a better word, like no matter which industry or field I'm showing up in, whether that's yoga and wellness or meditation and mindfulness or life and business coaching, I'm always gonna be sharing that same basic message, which is I'm here to help you find a way to connect on a deeper level with yourself. And that's just gonna show up all throughout. So I know that I'm doing the same work in all these different facets. And that'll help you feel more structured and more aligned in yourself so you're not like bouncing from one thing to the next and going crazy going, why can't I choose and why, why can't I figure out how these all co come together? That's what we're gonna figure out. How do they all come together? So that you know it's just different ways of expressing it. Because your purpose is pretty consistent. I help people with life purpose. Your purpose is pretty consistent. In fact, it should be consistent your whole life because it's what your soul is here to work on. But the way that you express that purpose and explore it in the world, that changes all the time. Because that changes based on all sorts of things like the opportunities in front of you or the people around you or the skills that you have or the new experiences you have or how you want to learn that one particular aspect of it. And something like self-allegiance or something like feeling like you're enough or feeling confident, that has you know myriad of little nuances to it. And you can feel not confident and unworthy and like you are completely externally focused and only going based on what other people say. And in middle school, that can be wearing, oh, thanks, Tim. <laughs> in middle school, that can be wearing what the cool kids are wearing. And when you're an adult, it can mean not understanding what diet choices to make because you just keep eating out. Like there are lots of different ways to explore self-allegiance in my example, or you can explore it deep, deep, deep in meditation and what it means to be an individual human versus connected to the larger whole. Like there's all these different aspects of a theme and they can show up in any number of different ways. So how your purpose shows up every day and throughout your life will change, absolutely. But from my experience, you're always living your purpose no matter what you're doing. And so you're living your purpose through your different business aspects. You're living your purpose through these multi, multi, multiple passions that you have. And we wanna figure out, well, what is the message that you're trying to explain with your purpose? Or what message do you want to share based on why you're here? So let's go through that step by step. There's only a few steps in this first little bit. And it's my favorite ones, because they're the big ones, right? Once we have the business message, everything else are really just details and implementation. But getting to that level and feeling like, oh yeah, that really is the thread that goes through all of the different beads of what I do, that's, that can be challenging to get to, because it requires us to like jump to another level of thinking. We're jumping up to some theoretical higher level stuff, and we're getting in touch with the soul instead of just sort of thinking through business strategy. We're going a little bit higher and a little bit deeper. So the first step is to dig into why your soul's actually here. Like, what are you doing here? What is the message that you're here to share on a bigger level? Even in your just daily presence, what is the message that you're here to share and that you are sharing whether you know it or not consciously? So the first thing is to say, there's a couple different ways to approach it, but we want to look at what's your soul's vision of the world. And your soul's vision of the world is that thing that your soul sees that nobody else sees. So for me, it's when I, I notice it when we have those experiences in real life and we hit up on something, we're like, that's not fair. 
that's not how life is supposed to be. That's your soul saying, hey, I live in a different world than what I just experienced in reality. So the first question is, what is that soul's vision? And you can ask questions like, if I got to redo the world, not as like the monarch, because that's a control-based thing, but if you just got to repaint the world exactly how you know it could be, how do people feel? How do relationships look? How do people interact? How do people express themselves? And what, what do they really know about themselves that allows them to show up in these ways that you want and the ways that you envision or know people can show up and they can feel? So to give you a tangible example, it'd be something like, for me, in my case, I know that people feel like they're enough and that allows them to interact with people without trying to take from others. So if I show up like I'm enough and you show up like you're enough, then we're not arguing. There's no conflict. So that's one of the big things in my world. There's no conflict or violence. And then once we have that, another way to approach that question is what's not in your ideal world. So for me, there's no violence in my ideal world. Well, if that's true, what else is true? Or there may be no Monsanto in your ideal world. Well, if that's true, what else is true? And that's just an example. It could be, you know, non-processed foods. Um, what else is true? Or maybe there's no insecurity in your ideal world. So if there's no insecurity, what must people know about themselves? So we want to dig into the positive of how are people feeling if this world isn't true? Or if the things in this world are true? I'd love a world with no one's in there. Exactly. I know. I was actually thinking of you when I gave that example, Jen. <laughs> Um, another way to ask this question is if this is too difficult, so if these concepts are too, um, too high level for you, you can also just close your eyes and think about somebody that you really love and make it somebody that you have sort of a reaction to that's very, very caring. So maybe a small child and think of that person and think, what do you really wish that they would know about themselves and carry through with them through their whole life? Because you just know if they remembered that one thing that their life would turn out really beautifully or they'd save themselves from lots of pain that you've experienced and that you don't want them to experience. So three different ways to look at it, starting with either, okay, this is my beautiful ideal world. How do people look and what are the different pieces of it? How do people feel? How do they interact? Second way to look at it is, well, what's not there? So for me, the only thing I knew going into this process the very first time was that there weren't any guns. And I was like, well, how do I get to a world with no guns? What else is there? What else is there? And so I peeled back all the layers, like, well, if there's no guns, what does that mean? And I peeled it back and back and back. And you can also go at it the third way, which is saying, okay, if I was going to wish for my niece or my daughter or my child, you know, to, to hold and remember something through their lives so that I would be able to save them from this pain, what would that be? What would I want them to know about themselves and remember as they go along? So honing in on that level or that, that type of world the next question to get at your purpose is, well, what's the most important piece of that? So with the child or the, the person you're thinking of and sending loving thoughts and wanting them to hold on to, that's easy because we can say, oh, it's that one thing. Great. So that one thing may be a representation of your purpose. In your ideal world, you can also think about it as the one piece, the one feeling, the one belief that underlies all of the rest of the world and makes it possible. So in my world, I said there were no guns. There's no violence, there's no taking, there's no theft, there's no rape, there's no any of that. And as I kept peeling back the layers to how is that even possible, I got down to the bottom layer and realized, oh, it's because people feel like they're enough. Great. Enoughness, or what I call enoughness, is the most basic level of my ideal world. And so that, for me, I then looked around in my life and said, is that something I've been exploring? Are there times in my life when I haven't felt enough? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Getting on this periscope was one of them. <laughs> you know, like there are lots of ways that insecurity and not being enough show up in my life. Are there times when I've also felt completely enough or other people have said, wow, you're so naturally confident. Yes. All of the, that enoughness from both sides, from every possible angle is showing up in my life. So for you, as you dig into your ideal vision and you start to get more and more clarity about what's underneath that and what makes it possible, you are not a thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jen. But that's my purpose, right? I'm always going to work through the negative side of it as well. Like the, all the feelings related to enoughness are going to come up for me all the time. And that's the beauty of it is now I forgive myself a lot more when I go through those periods of real um, like insecurity because I know it's just me 
digging into a deeper level of what it means to be enough, which actually means that I'm going to be a better service. Because the more I understand about the light and the shadow side of my purpose, the, the more I'll be able to understand other people and what they're going through. Because we're never going to have the exact same experience, but we can have really similar feelings and really similar um, experiences of the soul and of the mind. Like, what's it feel like to be alienated? What's it feel like to be, oh, thanks, Tammy. <laughs> what's it feel like to be disconnected? Or what's it feel like to be... Um, alone, you know, whatever, whatever's related to your purpose. Maybe it's not creatively expressive and you feel contained or restrained or not trusting. And then the, you're the flip side of that would be that people are inherently trusting and full of faith. So we're always going to be going back and forth through all these different ways that your purpose can show up. But we want to look at what's that thematic area. So for me, it's enough versus insecurity. It might for you be connection versus alienation. It might be, um, like we said, trust versus distrust. So there's this thematic area playing out that's the base and the most important part of your ideal world. And once we have that thematic area, to make that jump from, okay, that was my ideal world, my ideal vision, to what's that mean for my business? What's that mean for how I express my purpose in the world? Because so far we're just in concepts, right? We're not into the embodied expression of them. If we want to move into how I make my purpose real and tangible in this life, then we ask some questions like, well, who's struggling with that? So we're getting into audience here, but who's struggling with that? Well, in my example, who's struggling with not feeling like they're enough? Everybody. So that doesn't narrow it down too far, <laughs> but you know, everybody, or who's feeling like they're, they're struggling with feeling um, disconnected or alienated, whether that's spiritually or community based or elsewhere, everybody again, right? There's always going to be an aspect that everyone's going through. It's a human experience to have these emotions. So once we know, <laughs> we can narrow it down even more um, to, you know, what types of people interest you? Because if everybody's feeling with it not being enough, do I want to help teens feel like they're enough? I did that for a little bit. It was a lot of fun. Actually, three years ago to this weekend, I held a workshop for teens. Or do you want to help women feel like they're not enough? Do you want to help dads feel like or feel, you know, work through not feeling like they're enough. So you can start to look at these big groups of people and say, well, who actually inspires me? Where do I get really riled up? Not riled up in the sense that I'm going to go on and on and get really angry because, you know, that's like a political thing. Like, we just go and we go and we go and it doesn't help us and we're not getting anywhere. But riled up where you then feel energized at the end of it and really inspired to create things. That's a good marker that you're on uh, in line with your true purpose. Exactly. That's your passion. Thank you, Tammy. Perfectly said. So that's a good marker that you're in line with your passion. You get the passion, but it's passion that's energizing, not passion that's draining. So there are times when you're in a conversation and you got really driven and you're passionate for sure, but all you want to do is throw a glass across the room and never speak to that person again. And you go home and you're like, nah, nah. And that for me, you know, that for me that comes up in political conversations, I feel the same way about like, um, child slavery or, you know, rape is a are like tool of war. Like all of those issues get me passionate for sure, but they're not passionate like this conversation where I could talk about your life purpose all day long and still be excited to talk about it in 10 minutes. So we want to keep finding that thing that energizes you instead of drains you. And then we think about the group of people or the t like the specific aspect of um, or outlet for that communication that energizes you as well. So even if you have multi-passions, it's possible that your audience has a few things in common with each other. So I have a couple different audiences. My yoga students are almost all people who have injuries or they're older. But my business and life coaching clients are totally different than that um, demographically. They're younger, they're uh, married, they're not injured, they're not going through all of those physical issues that my yoga and meditation students are going through. But they do have a few things in common, which is that they're very independent people. They know that they can do a lot. They're very capable and they're committed to their own selves. But they're lacking in some little, like a tool here or there. They're lacking in that one piece of clarity that allows them to move forward. So they're just sort of hitting their head against the wall, which is frustrating. But they know that if they just figured it out, they'd be able to move forward. So I look for confidence. I look for previous history of success. So they know they can do things. They just don't know what it is. Um, 
and a desire, like an actual desire to learn something. So people who are injured have a desire to feel better and people who are stuck in their businesses or life have a desire to move forward as long as they believe it's possible. So I might still look at different audiences, but I'm looking for really common characteristics. We're getting slightly into another topic about audiences, but it's important to your message. So when we know that my general message is about enoughness or your general message is about um, you know, that, that you are inherently connected to one another. Actually, this is a great example. I had a client whose message was about being inherently connected and how if we understood that we were all one, then we'd be able to trust, which would allow us to build great things together. And the cool stuff about her work is that she was a jeweler, a beautiful jeweler, using really powerful gemstones, and also did all of this other community work around um, uplifting small businesses and then helping women who are in really dire straits and living in um, halfway houses and other shelters lift themselves up and get back into a place where they were able to support themselves. So huge di different aspects of work, right? And she came to me and she was like, what is going on? I have all these different areas and I can't figure out why none of them are taking off and why none of it's working. And I've got a little bit here that's going and then this and, you know, she's going back and forth. And what was really clear is that that string going through her three different beads was that we're all connected and that we can uplift each other through all of these different ways. And when we recognize that, yes, buying a necklace doesn't seem like something you're doing to help other people, but it's actually deeply connected to helping these women who she was then starting a project to help women make necklaces, you know, make their own, which allows them to sell, which allows them to better the whole, the community as a whole. So even if your time is just spent in an office, but you happen to make you know, enough money that you can buy one of these necklaces, you are still doing your part to play as part of the whole community. Oh, thanks, Jen. Enjoy your call. Um, so we were able to then really change her website language and change how she talked about her message to emphasize the fact that this is a whole process. This is a whole connection. And it's not just, hey, look at these great things that I make, but it's, hey, look at this movement I'm starting related to community and connection and women supporting each other. And you may be at this end making the necklaces because you're, you're having a tough time, or you may be on this end really well to do and able to buy those necklaces, but either way, you're part of a much bigger whole. And once she started talking about that message, all of her work made sense with each other, right? Or I have another client who's a fantastic public speaker, like amazing public speaker, leads the um, public speaking association in, in his part of the country. Um, and he's also fantastic at tech, techno technological things. It's late in the afternoon, technological things. Um, and just an all around great guy, plus really, really motivational and knows a lot about life stuff. So he's written a book on life purpose or life principles and confidence and motivation. And um, so how do we bring all these things together, right? He feels like he's constantly going through whiplash from like speaking to techno, techno ugh, really, really technology to motivation and life coaching. You know, he's bouncing back and forth between those things. But the thread that goes between all of them is that there are plenty of tools and platforms that you can use to share your message but you can connect with your message. So for him, he actually helps people get into that deeper space of realizing they're okay and that they have the tools, they have the expertise that they need to share and that he can then build these platforms, whether that's the speaking platform or the technological platform or the self-help and development platform that they need the personal platform they need to share that message. So for him, it's all about creating these methodologies and these ways for people to share their information, but by gifting them that awareness and that knowledge and that okayness that they actually know what they have, or they actually have enough to share and, and that they're okay already. So we wanna look for that thread. So we started with your ideal vision. Here we are in this big world. What's your ideal vision? What's the linchpin to that vision? So that thematic area, hey, thanks for joining. What's that thematic area that's running through your vision that's um, what I think represents your purpose, so something like enough versus insecurity or connected versus alienated, something like that. And then from there we look at, well, who's struggling with those feelings and how are those feelings showing up? This is giving us, um, or showing up specifically in the areas that you work. So if you are multi-passionate, how is that feeling area showing up in the, in the way that you work or in the people that you work with? So 
You might work on branding, for example, but what really is going on for the people that you help with branding is that they're feeling incapable or they're feeling um, like it's every man out for themselves and they can't figure it out. Or maybe they're feeling really lacking in confidence. So there's these deeper feelings that go behind why your clients reach out to you, no matter what type of work that you do. And we want to look for what are those deeper feelings and how are they expressing themselves for your particular clients. And we know the deeper feeling already, right, that we're looking for. We're looking for the one that's from your ideal world. So ideal world, that linchpin thematic feeling. And then how does that feeling specifically show up in your, um, what's the word, industry? In your industry. So in my industry, in yoga, enough versus insecurity shows up in a distrust of the body. Or it shows up in feeling um, like we have no control over the body. In business coaching, not feeling enough. Uh, and insecurity shows up in not knowing how to choose your message or not knowing how to choose your offers or not being sure who your audience is or not sure what your branding is or not understanding how to move forward and, and communicate and share yourself and get online and, and advertise. So that's how it shows up there. But I know that those are just symptoms of a much bigger problem. There are symptoms of this feeling of not being enough. So I'm always going to be working on this deeper level. I'm always going to be teaching my bigger message of self-allegiance or being finding that inner allegiance to what matters to you. Come back to you and your vision, you and your vision, you and your vision. If you read my blog, that's what I say every day. Come back to you and your vision, you and your vision. Because I know that that's the real solution for helping them through what seem like impossible questions of how do I figure out who my audience is, my message, my offer is all of this. We come back to you. So that's my work, right? Same in yoga. Come back to you. Well, how does your body feel? What does your body want? How does you, you know, always come back to you and same in meditation. So that's that central theme that's running through. So we're looking at that issue area. How is it showing up in your field? Like what are the symptoms of it? And then what is that common thread that runs through? So for me, that common thread is you are enough Let's re get back in touch with that. So I teach vision and self-vision, which I call self-allegiance. But you'll never hear me use the words allegiance to self in marketing because that's not what it's about, right? I'm about solving that problem. It's just the way I'm going to solve it is dealing with the bigger issue that I see that other people don't see. So if you have different aspects in your career, I want you to look across them and see what are the similarities in the feelings that are causing the problems that you see. So you're seeing a bunch of little, um, little, what's the, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on my words. <laughs> you're seeing a bunch of little symptoms popping up, right? The symptoms are, I can't pick branding colors. And the symptoms are, why can't I figure out Facebook ads? The symptoms are, you know, all of these different little things. What's actually beneath all of that? Is it that I'm inherently unsupported? Is it that I'm never going to be clear because I can't trust myself? Is it something like, um, like, or like for me, like I'm insecure and I don't know how to value my own opinion over others. Like that's the issue that we're dealing with, no matter how it's showing up in your business. So I want you to get really clear on what that message is for you, that much, much bigger message. And again, you never have to share it. You never have to publicly say what your message is excuse me, but for you to be clear on it is really important so that you know that all those different aspects of what make you you, so your ability to do amazing um, one-act plays and all the books you write and all that cool technology stuff you do and all that other stuff, you know, all those different pieces that make up who you are, they have a commonality to them and we want to know what that commonality is. And once you're clear on it, then you know, oh, everything I do is actually in line with my purpose. Everything I do is in line with my bigger message and my calling. Like you're, you're not off of it. You're just expressing it in all these different ways. And when you see the common, hey Tammy, welcome back. When you see the common thread going through that, then you can feel really grounded in the work that you do, like really grounded in the work that you do and start to share that bigger message or share that message from a deeper place. So that, yeah, you still might be doing graphic design, but that graphic design now carries a lot of weight with it. And people feel like, oh, you really are an expert in that. You really are clear on what you're teaching in that space because you're providing a service and you're providing a product, but behind all of that, you're giving a gift. And that gift is that deeper solution. It's that deeper knowingness of 
yes, you're connected. Yes, you're supported. And that comes through even if you never say it. It comes through with how you show up with other people. So who has questions? That was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot of information. But basically, three steps. Get clear on your vision, figure out what that linchpin is, and then figure out how is that core feeling, how is that thematic, uh, that thematic feeling showing up as symptoms that people are experiencing in the areas that you work in. So what are those little symptoms that, yeah, we could put a Band-Aid on, but if we actually want to solve it, we've got to dig into this deeper core feeling. And then we can start to talk about that message. And the beauty of that message, again, is that you don't have to share it because it's going to um, be infused in who you are. And in fact, it is who you are because it's your purpose, right? It's the area that you're here to work on. And there's no way to separate that from who you are. So you probably notice that there are people who've said things to you like, oh, when I'm around you, I just feel so calm. Or, oh, gosh, I just feel so much better around you. Or they'll say more specific things. And they're, they're picking up on the essence of who you are, which is that feeling, right? It's that thematic feeling. They're probably picking up on the positive side, which is good. <laughs> but you can't separate yourself from that. So no matter, um, even if you never e express in words your purpose or express in words that message that you want to share, it's still coming across. But you can also think more consciously about it. So for me, if I wanted to communicate without words to my clients that they're enough, how would I do that? And if you've been on my website, you might have a feeling when you look at it. And so for me, I, I've attempted to, with a beautiful um, web designer in the UK, create a space that's, that looks beautiful, that looks like what I envisioned as a garden. If you were walking into a secret garden and you were in that beautiful, peaceful space, it was, it's expansive and it's natural and it's spacious and you just feel like, okay, I'm completely safe in this moment. I'm completely enough in this moment. How do I express that? So I found somebody, I'm not a graphic designer, so I found a graphic designer, but I were able to communicate that message because I know how I want people to feel. And it's the same with all of the programs and the work I do. I'm teaching a yoga teacher training right now, and to them I say very clearly, if you walk away with nothing else from me, I want you to know that, that the goal of everything I share with you is to teach you how to have more allegiance to yourself than to the people around you or to the photos on the cover of Yoga Journal magazine. Find alignment from within. Find alignment from within. It's that internal vision. So that's coming through in all my lines of work. So I want you to look across your work. And if you have questions, feel free to email me. Look across all of your work and everything that you do and find those commonalities. Find that thematic area of your purpose showing up. How are you expressing it through graphic design? How are you expressing it through life coaching? How are you expressing it through being a Zumba teacher? How are you expressing it through being a business strategist? You know, all those different ways. Now, and if anybody has any questions, feel free to pop them in the box. And you can always message me afterwards as well. I'm Alexis at alexispierce.com. Pretty easy. Um, yeah. Whew. Good. I hope this is really helpful. It really pains me to feel people. Oh, I'm so glad, Tammy. It really, really pains me to feel, to see people feeling like they're not um, enough. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, we went through quite a few steps. So definitely watch the replay. Um, if you're on the replay, thanks so much for being here. So we definitely went through a lot. And one of the key things is that it, it does really pain me to see people feeling like they're failing because they have lots of different ways that they express their purpose. And at the end of the day, you're not feeling, you're just experimenting with all these different ways, right? And you may, once you find that central message, you may realize that, oh, actually, this way is not as effective as this way. So maybe it'll help you focus your efforts because you may realize it's not as effective for me to talk about community connection with, um, you know, volunteering with the Girl Scouts as it is in writing a book, you know, you can start to prioritize what's going to help you express your message even more. Or you may just realize, actually, all of the things I'm doing help me out. I had a client um, almost two years ago now who's a brilliant, brilliant woman. At the time, she had five jobs, four jobs. It was, she was exhausted. She was exhausted. She also had kids. It was absolutely exhausting. And what we discovered through the work was that she worked for this community newsletter and she did um, psychotherapy volunteer work for the social services and she did, what else did she do? She ran a parenting 
counseling business. She, were, she I mean, she had all these different things going on. But once we discovered what that central theme was for us, she was like, oh, I'm actually doing the same work over and over and over, but I'm sharing it with a different audience. So the community newsletter was to help that feeling of community and support and knowing that we're connected. And the social services volunteering was to go into families and help children and say, hey, we're all connected, you're supported, you're not alone here. And the parenting business and parenting counseling was, hey, you're not alone, it's okay, we're all connected, we'll figure this out. All the same message, it was just showing up in all these different ways. And once we had that clear message, she was able to adjust her business to make it more powerful and to make it more clear what she was really getting across. It was still going to be sold in terms of counseling, um, coaching, programs like that. We weren't talking about changing all the marketing, but we're talking about changing her internal focus to understand that it's not that she's confused with what she wants to do. She knows exactly what she's sharing. She's just sharing it in all these different ways. So hopefully that's an example that makes sense for you. So when you look across your life, we want to look for that common theme that's coming up and that common message that's coming through all of your work and get clear on what that message is. And then if you have a specific area of your work, like say you are an online business coach, or you are an online life coach, you can say, or any area really, look at the symptoms that people are dealing with and see if you can connect the dots between your deeper message and a business message that helps address those symptoms. So if the issues that I see clients have are that, like business clients, the issues that I see them have are that um, they can't figure out their offers, they can't figure out their message, they can't figure out who their audience is, and so I address those specific things. I'm like, hey, you've got a Facebook page, you've got a business name, you've even got your website all pretty and you're done. You know, you've got that all sorted, but you still feel like you don't know what your purpose is and you still feel like you're going through all the motions, but you can't figure out what your business actually is and you wanna help people on a bigger level, but you, you've got all these pieces and you don't know how they fit together. So I talk to that without ever saying, hey, I'm gonna work on you feeling like you're enough. Like, I, I don't need to go there. I don't need to go there. Because I'm, I'm addressing the symptoms by giving them that deeper solution as we do the work. In how I show up, in the words that I choose, in the way that we go about solving the problem. So you can see every problem I solve, we always start at that higher level vision. Because if I can teach you to find that higher level vision of what your soul's here to do in the world and to realign with your life's purpose, then I'm, I'm teaching you, without teaching you, how to have allegiance to yourself. Oh, that's my vision. Oh, that's my purpose. Oh, that's my message. I'm giving you the pieces to continually go back to who you truly are. So I'm doing the deeper work without having to talk about the deeper work, although in this context I'm talking about it. But hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you have questions, definitely email me, reach out to me. If you wanna watch this replay, if you missed the replay, um, or you want to watch it again, I'm going to post it in a page where you can go through. If you go to my website on the upper left, there's um, a little sign-up link that says get the, get the free training or whatever it is, and that'll just give you the page with all of the replays on it. So we're going to have some worksheets at the end of this week as well for some other trainings. So be here again tomorrow at 3 p.m., Tuesday at 3 p.m. We'll be talking about a different topic. This actually week is really cool. I've got this whole list of things we're going to talk about. It's really cool. Today we're talking about discovering what your business really is, and figuring out a coherent message um, if you're multi-passionate. And we're also going to be talking about how to deal with overwhelm. Um, the real reason branding is so hard. This is huge. This is like life-changing stuff. That session's going to be life-changing. Why branding is actually so hard and how to think about it and cut yourself some slack. Um, the mindset piece is behind getting confidence. So confidence is key, especially if you work with clients. So we're going to be talking a lot about, I think we have six things. So six specific mindset changes to help with confidence. And oh, this is my favorite, six, my best six tips on how to sort through all the business advice that you're getting in your life, because it's overwhelming. My inbox is like a flood of amazing things. And it's like, how do I figure out what to pay attention to? So my six steps for that. And then Thanks to Jen Terrell, she <coughs> excuse me, suggested that we talk about a strategy for social media and how to choose where you show up and how much and all of that. So we're going to go through some key tips on that as well that align with your purpose. Of course, because I'm teaching you how to align with you. So hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you tomorrow. Mwah.